I'm going to make a quick video here for you guys. Um, I was following this uh, friction heater build that I've been working on. See if I can get to you. I'm actually getting pretty decent temperatures at this point. Um, 276 and climbing. I've been playing with the the array uh, disc disc patterns, RPMs, and uh, substrates. So right now I'm running 2,500 RPM thereabouts. Uh, I don't have a tachometer, but I'm sure that's pretty close. Uh, knocking the display down. The amperage is 3.2, 3.1, 3.3. Jumped around a bit, but on average it's right around 3.2. Uh, so raise temperature again, 277. So with that, if you were to go... Uh, what did I say? 3.2, 3.2 times. I'm running 220 volt. Uh, higher the voltage, I think the better off you'd be. Probably 440, it'd even be more efficient. Or, or any, any other array besides this. The idea that I'm doing with this is trying to get optimized the temperature rise, least amount of time, the least amount of power input. And it's jumped up another degree. Um, it's pretty chilly out here, too. I can see my breath when I'm speaking. Um, Again, my my tarp doors, pretty fancy, fancy, I know. Uh, but, you know, one thing at a time. So, anyhow, just got this set up on uh, aluminum body for another heater. Get it up off the table so I'm not scorching the bottom of my table. Uh, I had a problem with that earlier. Um, a different weld process. But, anyhow, long story short. So, 3.2 amps. Just confirm that. That 3.2, 3.1. So a 3.2 times the voltage, which is 220 volts. 220 equal. Oh, this thing is getting messed up. So 3.2 times 220. So we're around 700 watts input almost 280 degrees uh, climbing pretty steady um, I've started this out uh, at the lower RPMs and it progressively just increased it increased it keeping the amperage right around 3 amps I haven't let it go over 3.5 amps because I don't want to go over the, the 800 watt mark so I'm, I'm trying to keep it in that array so I can uh, calculate and program the PI and D program that's going to optimize temperature increase to least amount of power input. Um, since we're heating atmospheric air temperature, after we get those calculations done, we're not heating water; we're heating air. Um, then you're going to then it's all about CFMs um, and going from there. So, at least from my understanding. Now, a little interesting aspect that I've come into contact with. These little neat little LED lights. Um, I want to show you guys this. I think it's awesome. Uh, something fun to play with. Do you see that? So, there we have it. I think that's capturing probably the DC injection of the veritable frequency drive. Now, it should be shielded from this side, but nonetheless, I'm able to capture it with this heater and utilize it. So, give me your comments. Tell me what you think. It's definitely something to be considered. It could be running a, uh, a low voltage. That's my dog being curiously curious. It could be um, uh, running a low voltage fan. Um, well, I think the possibilities are endless. So, there we go. So now we're at uh, 182 degrees. And we'll check our amperage. 3 amps, 3.1. Slowly decreasing the amperage. I'm thinking, thinking I'm trying to optimize this guy for around 250 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, for your scientific -y people, you guys can convert that into Celsius. I'm going to continue working off of Fahrenheit. Um, there we have it.
thought I'd post that. Again, still wired in the test configuration, nothing solid. What I'm going to be doing is going to be welding some cooling pins around here, building the shroud, all that kind of good stuff, just like before. Uh, yeah, so tell me what you think about this, guys. Give me your feedback. I'm real curious. I've been, I've been talking about this since the very beginning of the build, um, and being able to produce electricity, and now I'm showing you that it does.